I, I feel like I'm on, a, on one of those like food network shows. Your girl can't cook like at all. I'm like contemplating why I chose this dish. Hello everyone and welcome back to Clever Style. Erin Robinson here coming to you from my kitchen, which is not our usual backdrop here on Clever. We are going to be putting together a holiday potluck where everyone is going to prepare their favorite holiday dish and bring it and we're all going to feast together. And so, since we're doing this a little differently, we thought we would show you the journeys to the potluck, which means you're gonna see us cooking. I wonder how this is gonna go. One problem, your girl can't cook, like at all. For Thanksgiving, my family usually goes all out, like my mom's an amazing cook, my grandma's an amazing cook, and somehow it just skipped me. So I'm going to cheat just a little bit. Welcome to my kitchen. So for our Clever at Thanksgiving, I am going to be making fried chicken. It's not necessarily a family recipe the way I'm gonna be doing it because my mom usually makes fried chicken for holidays, but she does it with like bones and I cannot even handle that. My parents are like borderline professional chefs. So we're pretty spoiled, but I will usually try to help out. And I do cook a lot at home and I've definitely made fried chicken before. Um, I only started really cooking like this year, but I think I've been crushing it, right babe? Definitely. The holidays are my favorite time to cook and I have a bunch of dope recipes for holiday dishes, but I'm also really good at making guacamole. So I couldn't decide, so I picked two dishes. <laughs> so why can't you have guacamole and Southern style cornbread in the same meal? I feel like it seems right. Hey guys, Rachel here. So for the Clever Potluck, I decided that I wanted to make kimbap, which is a traditional Korean, I guess kind of like a sushi form. I think they typically make this dish during birthdays and special occasions. They don't make it during holidays or like New Year's, but like my family, we just kind of eat it whenever. I've eaten this dish like probably over a hundred times in my life, but I have literally never made it, ever. So I naturally called my mom and took a bunch of notes on my phone, so hopefully this will turn out okay. So I'm gonna start with my cornbread recipe, which is not at all mine. It is Paula Dean's cornbread recipe. I usually make this every year for Thanksgiving. I've already pre-mixed my cornmeal and my flour together, and it's really simple. It's cornmeal, self-rising flour, buttermilk, which everything that's delicious has buttermilk in it, and eggs, and then Paula Dean doesn't put this in her recipe, which is kind of shocking, but I add a little sugar. Look, just a little bit of sugar. If you do it like this, it's less bad for you. I told you I don't mess around. When it comes to holiday feasts, like I can't do a lot of things in life, but cook a holiday feast, I can nail it. Look what I found. Okay guys, to make this look more real, look, I'm gonna get one of these little tins and then I'm gonna wrap it in foil and they'll never know. Hey Clever fam, Madeline here. About to make some great potluck food. And by great potluck food, I mean I'm throwing things in a bowl. I'm gonna make a Caesar salad and cookies. Are they cookies from scratch? It depends on if you think that these are from scratch. Cookies and Caesar salad is not a family recipe, but I would like to think my family would be proud of me. I got my chicken right here still raw. It's got salt and pepper on it and that's about it. Pretty simple. And then I made the batter, which by make, I mean um, I put flour and seasoned breadcrumbs in a bowl. And then oil in a pan. That's it. It's so simple, like really anybody could do this. And now I'm going to take the chicken out of the plastic, place it into the tin can, put the lid on top, put it in the fridge, and then get ready to go. I went to my local crane market, which is called H Mart. This is essentially what I'm trying to make, this picture right here. Will it turn out like that? I'm not sure. We got the rice. We got eggs for protein. This is fish cake that I have to saute. This is radish and some kind of pickled root. I'm not quite sure what it is. And then we got some spinach here. I just need to saute the spinach and then carrot, sesame oil, some apple cider vinegar, sugar, and this thing that's gonna like help me roll it. Is it this way? I don't even know. So just put that chicken, get it nice and eggy. 
Mmm, yummy. And then drop that bee right in the batter. I did not hit the avocado lottery with this. I'm gonna see if I can cut around all of the kind of brown dead parts. So I'm gonna do what I can with what I have and hopefully I can salvage all of this. Thank God I have a backup food option because it would be bad if I just brought like a single cup of guacamole. Definitely put it in there before the oil was hot enough as you can see because this is not frying. Let's just come back. Let's just come back once the oil heats up. Turn it off. <laughs> but the dish I will be making is a specialty. It's a uh, fried chicken. And uh, have I made it before? No. Am I making it tonight? No. Okay, I, what just happened? That's not looking so good, but you know, it's gonna go inside of everything, so maybe it just won't look as bad when it's in the roll. You guys, the eggs, they turn out fine. Once I cut it, you can't even tell that it was all messed up. Oh, hey guys. So, welcome to an episode of Cooking with Susan. It's a bit of a running joke in my household in Australia that I actually don't know how to cook, but today, we are gonna attempt to make something which is a big part of everyone's childhood in Australia. And I was kind of shocked to find out that it's actually not an international dish. I don't know if I'm allowed to call it a dish. Chocolate crackles. Now, they are everything you can imagine and more. We went ahead and preheated the oven to 350 degrees. I mean, already this is stuff I do not do on a regular basis. What's up guys? The dish that I am going to be making for the Clever Crew is one that has been in my family for oh, like two hours. What I'm gonna make are pumpkin pie cake balls. Yesterday, I went ahead and made the cake balls. I've made cake balls before. I probably make them once a year and every year I forget the things that I shouldn't have done last year and so every year it ends up being <laughs> a mess. Usually for the holidays when I go home for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, we usually have fried chicken, but that's the one thing that is bought from the store. Now you may be wondering, can you cook a meal? Yes, I can cook. Have I cooked before? Yes. Has it turned out amazing? No. <laughs> um, so I just think it's easier if I just get something that I think tastes delicious and reminds me of home and my family, and that's the fried chicken from Ralph's, AKA Kroger. Update, I went to check in my cornbread and it looked a little weird. I was like, I gotta pre-test this and it is terrible. I think I have the wrong kind of flour. I'm not sure, I'm baffled because this is what I do every time, but somehow it is so not what I do. What do I do? Do I serve this subpar food or do I go buy something? Grab, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay guys, so these are the ingredients you need to make chocolate crackles. We need some cocoa, we need some shredded coconut, and then we need some icing sugar, and then 250 grams of coconut oil, and some cups. So, we take our kofa. a little taste because this is like the best part. Hey fam, we're back. We added all the romaine to this lovely bowl. Something I realized is that I'm gonna just finish the rest of it tomorrow because I don't want the croutons to get soggy. And Caesar salads are really great and they're really yummy and versatile. But my cookies are coming along quite nicely. Nothing really to report on that. So I just made the call, going back to the grocery store, possibly gonna get some more avocados, possibly just gonna get a whole new recipe. I'm freaking out. I have to like literally be there in two hours. My battery's dying and it's just a hard day. All right, we're here. Also, if anybody needs some free flu shots, go to Ralph's apparently. Guys, I found the chicken. Mm -hmm. I got 24 pieces of chicken. I think that should be enough. And now it's time to check out and head back to the office. I'm on my way, guys. All right, well, I'm running out of time, so I gotta get to uh, dipping my balls. So now I'm gonna go in and try to like, I don't know, put some glitter on it. So, and is this what you're supposed to do? Wow, I 
that's pretty. So now I'm gonna pour this concoction into the rice, and then we're gonna mix it up and get rolling. So I made three rolls, and now I have to cut them. So let's get slicing. Oh, it doesn't look that bad! Considering I've never made this before, I'm pretty freaking proud. But I just tried it, and you know what? It's not great, but it's also not bad. Okay, I've decided that I think I can make them look a little prettier with some like orange drizzle. Wow, I am pretty pleased with this coloring. So, all right, here we go. Drizzle time. Boom, those look way better. And as you can see, chicken has come along quite nicely. Got a couple more pieces going and then it'll be time to go and celebrate Thanksgiving with all my favorite people. Okay, got my balls. And uh, now I gotta figure out how to get them in the car without them rolling around and being all, you know, round. Okay, head baby. You ready to go? Let me stop you in, stop you in. <sighs> Potluck time. All right, I'm back from the grocery store. I picked up more avocados. Then I also picked up another dish, a third dish that I hope works out. It is bacon wrapped dates. So if I mess these up and the guacamole and the cornbread, like I should retire from the kitchen. It's time to open the fridge and to see how they've turned out. So here we go. Ta-da! Oh, look at that. They look perfect and, yep, see, they're hard, which means they worked to pack them up time. So the dates turned out really, really well and the guacamole actually turned out pretty good as well. I don't know if it's gonna be well received by everyone, but you know, there's only one way to find out. Let's go eat at the office. A few moments later. Okay, so it can't be a holiday party without some punch and some spiked punch. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a twist. <laughs> My heart just stopped, that's all. Just giving this a quick little stir with this big butcher knife. Look who just arrived! Hi, it's Madeline! Madeline, hey. okay, so since you're first, yes. I'm gonna need you to taste test this to make sure I didn't poison it. Oh, that's very good. Does it, are you sure there's alcohol in this? I mean, there could always be more. <gasps> Look who's here! Hi guys, we did it. Wow. Not together. Drew, is that turkey? It's a bird. A, a bird? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. oh, did you cook that? I sure did. Absolutely I did. That's smells of course familiar. I did. It smells like Ralph's. I brought balls that you took out of the balls. <gasps> oh, the best kind. Rachel just arrived as well. So we have kind of like a girl squad here and um, I'm gonna put you guys to work. Yeah. Work. What are you doing? want us to do? Work. That's what I did. So now that we have everybody here, we have all of our food, it's time to plate everything so that it looks like we're professionals. Rachel, you brought sushi. I brought a Korean version of sushi. My mom told me it was really easy. It's not. I was like really close to just going by. But I was committed so my ancestors would be proud of me. It's beautiful. Is it delicious? delicious? It's a beautiful. My non-holiday contribution, guys. This is a very me thing. Okay, I made a Caesar salad. Yum. Yum. To be honest, like I was actually really proud that it just didn't look terrible. And then I felt like it was that was a casual dish. Then I made cookies. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
get some meatloaf. Our office kitchen looks a little like an A&W cafeteria, which I love, but it's not really festive. So we have a bunch of decorations. We're gonna make this place look like a fancy restaurant. The crew out there is decorating because they're so good at it. Yeah, they're working really hard. They're so good. That's not our strength. No, I'm really bad. Our strength is making sure that no one dies eating this. It could be poison, so we're gonna taste test a little bit. We take, we take the, you know, the liability off of everyone else by doing that. We're doing the more noble job. Don't tell them that, but. That's easy. This is hard. So, um, as you can see, I have created a gold setting. I didn't buy any of these things, so I can't take credit for any of it. But it really all came together um, with little to no help from anybody else. So, you know. I put the spoons at the top, and then I put the, the knife on the right side. I'm making cornflake salad, which is a very, I don't know, I thought it was normal, but I've only encountered it at my grandma's house the whole life. My grandma's, um, she grew up on a dairy farm in Minnesota, so I think that's very reflected in the ingredients and the thought process of cornflake salad. Basically like a trifle or like a parfait is, you know, she never called it that, she just called it cornflake salad, but it's like gonna be layered up in this thing of whipped cream with a little bit of sweetener and vanilla. So we do one layer of cornflakes here, a little bit of this whipped cream. This is um, just oranges. My grandma always does them with the scissors, so they're nice and like chunky. Great, great. We'll just sprinkle some pans in there. And then shredded coconut, which I will say, I think my grandma might use slightly sweetened, like flakier kind, but I did the, just a regular dried shredded coconut. Yeah, so there you go. So that's one basic layer. I'm gonna do a couple more. It looks like I'll probably only fit one more inside here. But you go as high as you want it. However tall you're, you know, the sky's the limit. It's been a journey, but we made it. It is finally time for us to dig in and start eating. Um, so I gotta corral all these folks from all of their small talk conversations. Everyone! Welcome, welcome to our Friendsgiving, annual Friendsgiving party. This turned into a speech. I so everyone's hungry and it smells really good in here and the food's getting cold, so without further ado, I think we should all eat! Yay! Yay! I'm looking and I feel like nobody's talking about the fried chicken that I made. Um, I put a lot of art into driving through. Oh wait, she has got chicken! <laughs> Thank you! Oh, is this like a family history? Um, Ralph. Ralph. I think that we should go around the table, we do this in my family, and say something that we're thankful for. What I'm most thankful for is... I knew you said that. Oh my god, I totally knew she said that. And I didn't even hear it. I'm super thankful that we were all able to get together today and do this. This is actually like so much fun and hilarious. And I am very thankful for every single one of you, and everyone behind the scenes too. And also, I'm thankful for Bridget. <laughs> Being new to Clever, I'm just very grateful to be here and everyone's welcome to me um, with open arms and I'm grateful for food and dairy and Bridget and Jill and hair extensions. I'm getting this on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful for all of you. Um, I'm thankful for a job because, like some people at the table said, that sucked. <laughs> um, and I will be even more thankful if some magical person from the kitchen could bring me a paper towel to be part of it. Also a LaCroix. And whoever's going over there. <laughs> I'm also really super thankful for American food, like uh, mac and cheese and fried chicken and chicken waffles, because they're a big part of my life now and they were before, and they really do completely. So I'm thankful for all of you guys, because I'm also a newbie. You guys all welcome me with open arms. Also, I'm like kind of weird, so I was like, mm, I'm not sure if they're going to be like judging me, but like, I feel like we're all a little bit. Yeah, I love a gratitude practice. I like to say, uh, uh, you know, uh, attitude of gratitude, you know, hard to be hateful with the playful and grateful. I know what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for you guys, the subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, you should. There's a button right there. As the grandmother of Clever, I just have to say thank you for supporting us through all the dark times, through all the best times, through all the last 10 years of the life of Clever. You're the reason why we do it, and we're really super grateful for you. So that is a wrap on I think our first ever Clever Friendsgiving dinner, lunch, brunch, breakfast, you get it, meal. Um, you guys, let us know in the comments. I know Thanksgiving is around the corner. I know not everybody celebrates Thanksgiving, but are there any other holiday treats or traditions that you guys do to celebrate 
your friends, your family around the holiday season. Let us know in the comments. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We are super grateful for you. You just truly give us so much joy. You're supporting us. We wouldn't have jobs if it wasn't for you. So thank you so much for being a part of our clever family. And you guys will see you back here next time. Bye. That was so much fun, right? And if you want more where that came from, there's a box right here with another video that you're gonna love. So also click that and then also click the subscribe button right there. Subscribe, become part of the family.